Good afternoon. Welcome on in to another episode of From Day One. This afternoon, courtesy of our good friend, Father Skeptic, we have a substitute defendant who demands both to get help doing his case, but to have speedy trial at the same time. Let's begin. So today, we have an obnoxious defendant who demands both a speedy trial and more time to prepare himself for the speedy trial. In other words, he wants to take a shit and eat it too. So let's begin. People of the state of Michigan versus Benjamin Macario Martinez, 237407ST, 226707ST, and 162435FY. Concerning the matters, then, we were set over from last time. Um, Mr. Downing, in regard to the underlying matters that are left open, has there been any progress? Uh, Your Honor, uh, the offer, I believe, was extended to Mr. Martinez by letter dated June 8th, uh, while he's been incarcerated in the jail. We have not heard what his response is, so I will leave it to Mr. Martinez whether he wishes to enter a plea pursuant to that on the two files he has to, to that offer or seek an adjournment. All right, we're also here for sentencing on a number of contempt. So in regard to the two open charges, Mr. Martinez, um, and you're proceeding here today in general. Are you choosing to proceed without a lawyer here today? Yes, I am, Your Honor. Well, that was your first mistake. And as you guys are about to learn, he wants to represent himself while at the same time complaining over and over about the disadvantages of representing yourself. So concerning the um, okay. two files that remain open, 6707 and 7407, Ms. Cass apparently sent you another offer after we had court last time. Mr. Martinez, I have no idea what that offer is. The court is not part of any plea bargaining. You have both of these cases here. What is your position in respect to whatever they sent you? Um, I would like to uh, file a motion to have charges all dismissed <laughs> the Speedy Trial Act. And also, uh, I'm, I didn't get last time we were in trial or in court. Uh, I didn't. I expressed to the court that I wasn't able to have a reasonable time or an adequate uh, law books. They're old. I only got an hour and a half. So what? Do you expect the court to give you eight years to go out and get yourself a law degree? You see, the Constitution allows you to represent yourself. But it also allows you to lick windows. So just because you, you have windows? a constitutional right to do something does not mean that you should do it. I only know some rules for an hour and a half of studying. So out of uh, my freedom of speech and uh, the rules of professional conduct, I'd like to read well, my motions. Oh, do we have to? Right, okay, I guess we do. Uh, for every waste of time and the more money of the people and their state, I would like to say this under the right of free speech, and I would like to invoke on my rights, civil and state laws to state and file motions and to be treated fairly by judge and prosecution to uphold all the laws that are to be well, in rich. the courts. And so as me representing myself can have a fair chance with all having rights infringed upon by any members of the court, and I'm doing so. I'd like to file a motion to have all charges dismissed upon my rights being infringed and violated. Due to these reasons, rights to speedy trial and to have adequate time to with representing myself and in doing so, these are my civil rights and need to be enforced and protected. Not enough time to study even after a motion or the judge through a plea not able to study in a reasonable time having defended myself when it was brought to the court's attention and prosecution if need to it's all on court record 
transcripts and rights of trial by jury and adequate time to have my own witnesses. Are you seeing the contradiction yet? He begins by saying that his right to a speedy trial has been infringed upon, but then he makes a bunch of claims that would require him to waive his right to a speedy trial to begin with. Which are under the time frame and the oh, so he's stupid. No one we didn't explain what or help me, which is repugnant and biased by the court. And for also the court saying and giving false advice and also for my bond being excessive and also biased and setting bond by saying it's more than fair when I was unable to bond out and when it was amended, uh, I have reasons why I 30 days from the time line of being able to represent myself is uh, being a friend, Sean, and I'd like to have my trial by jurors, and these are the few offhand as to why uh, most of the Speedy Trial Act and also False Pretense Act 774.49, they have to abide by all Supreme Court rules and also rules of professional conduct. Opinion 4, which is federal, asking for help retaining for motion prosecutors rule 3.8, didn't take action or all actions, making sure my rights were protected, and rules 4.3, if they Do we have to continue with this legal the And what I'm saying, these are U.S. Supreme Court, Michigan rules, and and uh, 30, 30 days minimum for U.S. Supreme Court 3161-C2 dismissal speedy trial act 3162 and 3164 uh, 1974 18. <laughs> And discipline of all attorney 3161, knowing I'd never be able to proceed without justification. Rules 3.2, repugnant or imprudent prejudicing, impartial trial, miscarriage. Also, people versus Lehman stating that I shouldn't be in jail or in prison for fines when able to prove I was unable to meet the court's obligations and. I was also in jail during the time of uh, the one failure to appear. Oh my God, it never ends with this dipshit. First, thing, thing, thing. he demands a speedy trial, yeah. he's granted it, and then fails to show up to a speedy trial. Oh, when it oh. plays out like this, typically the judge is under no obligation to reinforce a speedy trial when you waived your right to a speedy trial by not showing up to begin with. Now, right to a speedy trial is a complex matter, and it won't always play out like this, as there are always mitigating circumstances that could allow a judge to come to a different conclusion given a similar situation. And I don't think it's very fair that with having Aww, uh, to go against people that have eight years of schooling versus my hour and a half, when I've asked every day to go to the law library, I'm kited. And there's no way that my uh, act to speedy trial, if you need that read, uh, can ever be met. Go. And I got a bunch of federal laws to that. If we have to go through all them, why? Or I can write them up in a motion to have more reasons to, for dismissal. All right. Thank you, more Mr. Reasons Martinez. For Mr. Paper? Down into your wish an opportunity to respond, or do you want an opportunity Please to? No. Do a written response, or where are you at with that? Um, that's a very rambling, yes. uh, if you want to call it, motion. Uh, I don't know how any kind of speedy trial is implemented, uh, impacted here, in as much as one of these was just set for trial, and the first trial date was today. He also failed to appear on the other one. He set for sentencing on that. If he's complaining about legal research, he has a right to a court-appointed attorney to assist him in advising him of all that. I do know the record two handwritten responses from Mr. Martinez in response to Ms. Cass's offer a uh, letter asking to discuss these, the offer with her. It says nothing in there about uh, speedy trial or 
anything of that nature to the extent that he's setting himself up or trying to set himself up for these objections, uh, I don't think there's any basis for it whatsoever. But if the court would like a written response, we would need a transcript of what he has rambled on about here in order to decide yeah, we all do. exactly he's arguing. All right, in regard to the matter, we've spent a good hour and a half or more on the record. I think it was last week, maybe the week more before. Like a day and a half. We went through a whole plea colloquy. We got down to the end, and the deal had been made. He decided at the last minute then he wanted to have a trial. So we set this matter over to today's date. He didn't want a lawyer then. He doesn't want a lawyer now, yet you want to complain that you don't have access. You're going up against people with eight years of education. Which is it, Mr. Martinez? You want to represent yourself or you want a lawyer? I want to represent myself. But I also was given false information by some court uh, officers that I wasn't allowed to have a standby counsel or have advice by a counsel. And I know there's a, also a federal law that says that I'm able to have a third party advice. So I, I, like I said, I only got out for two days, really the, the last two days. I don't know how I'm supposed to be able to study upon the law, which I stated last time that the law book, books are, and pages are missing out of them. And I showed guards that last night. Like there's no way that I have will have 30 days to be able to study and defend myself from the time of this trial. And it states that in as a federal law that and if you want to see the Speedy Trial Act, I have it right here. No, it we don't need Are you familiar trial. with that? Thank and you. that in about 35 years now. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. So in regard to the matter, Mr. Martinez, um, your motions are denied. Oh, thank God. In regard to your, your lack of a speedy trial issue, the following is my finding. One, first off, I'm going to sentence you on all of these failures to appear in contempt of courts. Last week, you had the opportunity. I dismissed and purged two of them. If you pled on two of them, we got through the whole plea colloquy on that. And, oh, you didn't want that either. So... Then we went through the hearings, and I found you guilty of four contempts because you failed to appear three times, and you haven't paid. We're looking at a, what, 2016 case that you still haven't paid on. So this is my sentence. You want to say anything in respect to your failures to appear sentencing before I impose sentence? Please don't Mr. be Martinez. stupid enough to sue. Yes, there's federal law state and, oh. and that, that you cannot imprison somebody for fines being unpaid. Yeah, fines, not court-ordered sanctions. If you were ordered by the court to pay money and you failed to do so, you better have a good reason or you could be found in contempt of court and be holding all future hearings from the Zoom jail center instead of the dumpster behind 7-Eleven. And, like, and I already told you that I can prove that I wasn't there. You guys know the law. You're supposed to uphold it on both sides. I know that. It's well, I that. made my findings. You are able to appeal you told, anything you wish. You gave me bogus information. Yes. You're not supposed to give me legal information. That's not your, you're not supposed to do that. The only thing you can tell me is I can go by representation or I'm allowed to have an attorney. You gave me bogus laws to look up and information and you were biased. So there's right. another reason. Well, Mr. Martin, Wait, she's biased by helping you? are noted for the record and preserved. In regard to the matter on the failure to appear and failure to pay in 162435FY, I'm imposing 45 days in jail, 23 days of Yay, credit 45 on both days. counts. In respect to 226707ST, two failures to appear, 45 days in jail, credit for 23 days concurrently with the other case. In regard to your outstanding cases, the 237407ST, we will set that for trial on July 10th. That'll be all day trial. That one will come first. And we will set the 226707ST trial for um, just for a call that day. But we're going to try the newer one first. The older one, he's already failed to appear on it twice. I'm making the following findings in respect. Concerning Michigan Court Rule 6.004, speedy trial. In regard to the matter, concerning Mr. Martinez, bond is set at 1,000 personal recognizance. Actually, it's set at 1,000 personal recognizance in 237407ST. I don't think I'm going to set that one first then. 
in regard to the 226707. He has a bond on the failures to appear. He's already been sentenced on those. He's serving time on them now. The underlying bond on the driving charge is. You can it all right, Colonel? All right, we'll set that one for trial first, then. The 226707ST, the newer one has a PR bond on it, so there's no requirements for time on that. Okay, so it'll be a firm trial date on July 10th. Yes, on July 10th. And concerning the matter, then, in regard to the court rule, Mr. Uh, Martinez has been incarcerated since his arrest on May 25th on all of these matters that were outstanding. The trial is set for July the 10th, which is beyond 28 days. However, at this point in time, Mr. Martinez has one serving a sentence, two has failed to appear numerous times in this trial previously, including several trial dates that were set timely. And the reason that it's not going to trial, and for example, I gave him a timely trial date back on April 29th of 22, when he didn't do us the courtesy of bothering to come to court. So I am finding under the court rules, there is good cause and clear and convincing evidence that's been demonstrated that he's likely to fail to appear for future proceedings should i give him a pr bond on this case oh, so for those reasons um i'm leaving the bond in place we'll set a firm trial date for july 10th we'll trail the new trial along in other words motion to dismiss denied and if you change your mind about a lawyer in the meantime, Mr. Martinez, you can make the request to the district court clerk. She'll refer it to the Michigan Indigent Defense Commission. They'll decide whether you qualify. In the meantime, the jail has the sheriff has the purview of the resources over there. You're entitled to use the jail resources. The sheriff is the one that's going to decide what the time parameters are. I don't have any control over the sheriff. So you can complain, your record is set, you have made your record, it's all preserved here today. But in respect to the issue, if you really want to have some assistance and get some meaningful legal advice, I would suggest you apply for a lawyer instead of just complaining about it, but that might actually get you somewhere. So I don't know, Mr. Martinez, it's on you. In the meantime, an appeal to circuit court may be taken within 21 days from the date of your sentence or as permitted pursuant to Michigan Court Rule 6.65b if the sentence includes incarceration and if you wish to file an appeal but are financially unable to do so, MIDC will appoint a lawyer for you if that request is made within 14 days after your sentencing. In regard to the issue of trial, um, I request for jury instructions and whatnot. The pretrial order was released. I sent out a pretrial order last year. Those 10 deadlines remain in place. Mr. Martinez, we'll see you for trial July the 10th. Yeah. If anything changes in the meantime, you know what to do. Yeah, yes, the balance here remains outstanding. Payable commencing 30 days <laughs> after his release from jail and every 30th day thereafter. And that's 100 a month on that outstanding 2016 case. All really? Right, thanks to the Only 100? That will be it on these files. Bye. Have a great time. All right, guys. That's the end of the video. Like I said, I'm currently in Prague traveling Europe right now. My well, I hope you enjoy that. I believe you're heading up to, I think you told me, offline Bratislava. That's a beautiful little country. Hope you enjoy. Thank you for being with us over there in Europe. All right. So with that, we're going to bring the afternoon to a close. As always, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Be kind to of one another and release the brackets. As we march along this afternoon and every afternoon here from day one. Have a great afternoon. We'll see you tonight for more fun.